welcome to Empowered Heart to Heart, where you'll hear messages of hope, conversations that heal, and interviews that empower. Well, hey, this is Rhonda Simmons, your host of Empowered Heart to Heart, and I'm so glad to be with you on another episode of our podcast. I've been having a great time on this podcast. And if you don't tune in every week to get the latest episode, you're missing out on a lot. And I'm so glad to be with you one more time. Uh, No guests today. It's just me. I'm just super excited to be here because I have such a growing sense of anticipation in my heart today. And not just today, it's been growing for the past couple of months. And I just want to talk about it today to a certain degree. Now, I must confess that I am one of those people uh, who firmly believes in moving in silence. You can't always let everybody know uh, what your dream is and what your vision is because they don't always uh, see what you see, know what you know, or hear what you hear. So some things you just have to ponder in your heart until God releases you to share it. And so I won't give a lot of details through today, but I do have a message of hope that you can apply to your life um, based upon uh, a scripture that I'll share. I have so many wonderful things planned for 2024. You know, I am one of those people who uh, always think forward. I'm thinking about the future. I've got things already planned um, well into uh, the spring and beyond for 2024. And I'm excited about that because the more you plan, the more success you can um, predict and and kind of count on. Of course, you never know 100% how things are going to turn out until they turn out. But it gives you more time to think of different perspectives, different things that you need to get done. And that's just good business. Uh, Running a business by the seat of your pants uh, is just not going to work. And so I'm excited about what I have planned for um, the Simmons Empowerment Foundation. I'm also excited about what I have planned for my coaching practice. Did you know that coaching is a part of the Simmons Empowerment Foundation, of which I am the founder and CEO. Coaching is our service arm. uh, But aside from the foundation, I am a master certified professional coach. And God has blessed me to be situated at a junction between education and ministry. And I know those sound uh, like two entirely different things. I would say yes and no. I see some similarities between the two. Uh, But because of my background in education for nearly 15 years as a teacher and a school administrator, um, I'm able to be a student success coach where I help teenagers, well, I should say students ages 14 to 21 who are at risk for high school dropout to improve their college and career readiness. And then with Um, my over 30 years in ministry, I'm a balanced ministry coach. And I work with pastor's wives to help them find more balance and improve their balance um, life ratings without jeopardizing their marriages, their ministries, or their careers. Because this is what I know about pastor's wives. They often feel absolutely invisible And no one seems to know that they feel this way because everyone thinks that the pastor's wife is okay and she has it all together. Um, A lot of times pastor's wives feel like they have no voice because no one considers that they actually bring some expertise to the table and they're not just there for eye candy. Yes, I said what I said. So (laughs) um, pastor's wives also uh, feel overwhelmed by the unrealistic expectations that are put on them by the very people they're trying to serve. And, you know, it's interesting uh, how people think, you know, they want the pastoral family to live 
uh, to a certain expectation that they themselves aren't willing to do. But that's another sermon for another day. <laughs> um, but let me tell you, there's such a great need there with pastor's wives because they seem to have mastered the art of suffering in silence. No more. And God has, has equipped me um, and burdened me with this assignment to help pastor's wives a achieve a life balance that works for them without giving up the ministry, definitely without giving up their marriage and without giving up their careers if they choose to have one. And so it's so important that we have life balance because so many physical diseases and conditions are a direct result of the stress that we're under and the anxieties that we're trying to deal with. And so it's so important that pastor's wives have a safe place to get the support that they need. Because let me tell the pastor something. A lot of times, pastor's wives do not want to burden you with what they're dealing with because they feel like you're carrying enough. And so they're trying their best to do what they can do to support you, pastor. Um, but they're dealing with so much and they don't want to add to your stress. And so they feel like they are alone with no outlet. Well, I am Coach Rhonda. I bring over 30 years experience in ministry. Um, and I am here to be that outlet. Now, let me explain to you uh, what my coaching practice is not. My coaching practice is not the place to spill the tea and gossip and all of that. Um, one thing that you will notice when you coach with me, uh, pastor's wife, is that I am not going to ask you who your pastor is. I am not going to ask you the name of your church, the name of your church organization, because this is not that. The focus is entirely on you and what you need in order to find that place of balance that works for you. And so I'm here for you. I want to help you reach out to me. You can email me at admin, A-D-M-I-N, admin at coachronda.org. That's all one word, Coach Rhonda. And Rhonda has an H in it. Coach, R-H-O-N-D-A, Rhonda, coachronda.org. And so I, I am so super excited um, I've got great things in store for uh, my coaching practice, for the foundation, uh, and I'll share more um, with you. I'll just say it like this. The things I have planned can be summed up um, this way. We've got our third annual 5K coming up June 1st. You'll hear more about that. I've got my next summit specifically for pastor's wives with five or more years experience in the ministry. That's coming up February the 29th, March 1st and 2nd, three days. You don't want to miss it. Um, as I have more information, I will start releasing it. Um, but that's what's coming. There's more coming down the road, workshops every month. You don't want to miss it. Um, I'm sure uh, there'll be another book next year. There are things happening um, that you're not aware of, and you'll find out soon enough. And so I'm excited. So I want to get to this message of hope uh, while we have a chance. And so there has been one word that God has been resonating through my spirit for well over a month, I would say two or three months. And it, I, I hear it all the time throughout the day. I hear this one word, and that word is prepare, prepare. Just over and over, I hear God saying that. And uh, for all of you uh, uh, left-wing thinkers, no, I'm not uh, talking about preparing, uh, you know, for death or anything like that. Although I could preach about that because the Bible does say it is appointed unto men uh, to live. And after that, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, it is appointed unto men to die and after that, the judgment. And so there's a time and place for that. 
and we need to be prepared to spend um, eternity in heaven or hell, one or the other. There's no in between. Um, and if you're alive, you get to choose. Yeah, you do. Live like you want to go to heaven. I'm not going to tell you how to live so you can go to the other place because pretty much people in the world have figured that out. But if you want to go to heaven, you've got to know how to get there God's way because it's his heaven. And so let me just stop for a moment and, and place this right here, that if you are to be born again of water and spirit, according to the Bible, the Bible says that we are to repent of our sins. That means to have a change of heart about our lifestyle and what we're doing and how we're living and to stop doing those things that God says it's a sin. We need to read the Bible. He's not leaving this plan of salvation up to how we think, how we feel, and what our opinions are. Salvation isn't, a, isn't an opinion. It is a biblical truth that we need to apply to our lives. And so the first step is to repent of our sins, then to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the taking away or the removing or remission of your sins. If you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus and have your sins removed, I encourage you get to my church tomorrow, New Life Apostolic Church at 4712 East Ransier Avenue in Colleen, Texas. Come on, we'll baptize you. The water is ready. The water is warm. We have uh, baptismal clothes that you can change into. We have towels. We have hair, dry hair dryers. We have whatever you need that you may think is an excuse to keep you from being baptized tomorrow. We've got it covered. You need to get to the house of God. New Life Apostolic Church at 4712 East Ransier Avenue. And I promise you, once you have repented of your sins and you've been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, then according to Acts 2.38, it says, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children and to as many uh, and to all that are far off and as many as the Lord our God shall call. And so don't sit there and think that you have done too much. You've been too bad. You've committed too many sins to be saved and born again. Let me tell you that there is nothing that you have ever done or will do that will get God to stop loving you. God loves you with an everlasting love. That is why he has um, given us this plan of salvation to prepare us for heaven. Because let, let me just share this with you. I know you are a nice person. I know you have some really good qualities, but those are not enough to ensure your seat in heaven because God has some qualifications that must be met to get you there. And those are repentance, the baptism in the name of Jesus, and the receiving of his spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. And you know that you have the Holy Ghost because it will make itself known by the speaking in other tongues. It'll be a language that you don't know and you have not learned. God will speak through you. The spirit of God is real. Just in case you did not know, God is real. He is alive and he is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so God has a plan for preparing us for heaven. I know that you have done some good things in your life and I know you try to treat everybody right and we appreciate that. But that again is not enough to ensure your seat in heaven. And then let me also explain to you, once you have repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus name and received the gift of the Holy Ghost, um, that is not the end of the story because then we've got to find out according to God's holy word, the Bible, we've got to find out how he expects us to live every single day in a way that pleases him. It may not please you. It may not please your family. It may not please your friends. But what does God say 
I need to do or not do in order to be pleasing in his sight and to be ready for heaven. And that is why we've got to get into a Bible study. We offer Bible studies at New Life Apostolic Church. You want to know how to live? You want to know how to be born again? We can do Bible studies with you so that you can get an understanding. In fact, the Bible even says with all you're getting, get an understanding. The Bible also says that God's people perish for lack of knowledge. Don't be eternally lost because of your ignorance, because you did not know that God already has an established preparation plan for you to get to heaven. The way is already made. In fact, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. And so it's real important that you prepare yourself for heaven. But that's not what the lesson is about today. So if that part was for you, great. But the next part may be for some other people whom God has given a plan and a vision to for your life. Beyond salvation, what is God's purpose for you? What has God placed in your heart that you just can't stop thinking about and is it wakes you up at night or keeps you up and keeps you awake in the middle of the night because you're thinking about the purpose that God has for you? In fact, I believe Jeremiah 29, 11 says that for I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, a plan uh, to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you an expected end. God has a plan. In fact, he says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those that are uh, the called according to his purpose, not yours. His purpose. What is God's purpose for you? And if you're listening right now, you know what that is. God has already spoken to you about what his purpose is. Now, here is where the meat of today's message of hope is. Because if you're like me, you know the purpose. God has has given you that vision in your heart and mind that he wants to do with your life. He's given you a vision of the end result. He's given you a vision of the big picture. He knows the end from the beginning. And God has given you that vision of this is where you're going to end up. What he has not given you is the details along the way and all that you're going to have to encounter, all that you're going to have to know and learn and do in order for that end result to come to pass. And so the word that God has instilled in my spirit for the past several months is prepare. I know that we all want to sit on the sidelines and cross our legs and look cute and just say, I'm waiting on God. Well, that's that's a nice cliche, but let's talk about it. Because if you ask a waiter or waitress in today's society, they understand that to be a part of the wait staff means you're going to be on your feet. You're going to be moving. You're going to be serving. You're going to be doing everything you know to do in order to serve others. My God. And so when we're waiting on God, that doesn't mean sitting down, crossing your legs and looking cute. It means that you are preparing for what God has promised you. And so when I say prepare, I'm asking you, what are you doing to put things in place so that when the vision comes to pass at the appointed time, you are ready? Let me just put it like this. I did a workshop last month um, that uh, actually the month before last, I did a workshop about uh, preparing for the palace while you're still in the pit. You know, everybody wants to say, I'm going to the next level. I'm ready for my next. I'm going, you know, to the next level. I'm going higher. All that's wonderful. That sounds real good. But my question is, 
Are you ready for what next? For what's next? Have you prepared yourself for what's next? Because if you have not prepared yourself, you're not going to know what to do with what's next. You're not going to be able to handle what's next. And so God has commissioned me and assigned me today to inspire you and encourage you to prepare. Prepare yourself. Get yourself ready. You know what that vision is. Let, let, let me put it in a, in a language that we may understand. I have some friends that love to run 5Ks, 10Ks, marathons, and, and all that's wonderful. But I promise you, especially when it comes to a marathon, you're not going to wake up today and just jump out the bed and run a 26.2 mile marathon if you have not done the training. You cannot do it. You are not physically prepared to go the distance. You're not physically prepared to cross the finish line. Oh yeah, you can start out, but somewhere before, and I might even add long before the finish line, you are going to fail because you have not taken the necessary precautions to train pro properly. You've got to understand the benefit, the power, and the blessing of being prepared. And God is saying that if you're going to fulfill the purpose that he has placed in your life and heart, you must prepare for it. Some of you may not even believe me, but let me give you so, some word on it. You remember King David? It was in his heart to build a temple for the Lord. He wanted to build that house of God. He wanted it. He wanted it. He wanted it so bad, but God wouldn't let him do it because he was a man of war and had blood on his hands. And, and no matter what you think about that, he had this burden. He had something he wanted to do so desperately and God wouldn't let him do it. And so rather than getting mad at God and sucking his teeth and, and you know, kicking the dirt and pouting like a two-year-old, he said, you know what? If I'm not going to be able to build this temple, then this is what I can do. I can prepare for it. I can get everything ready for it. I can prepare my son Solomon with my vision so that he can fulfill it. I owe oh, glory to God. I can prepare my offspring for carrying on my legacy for building this temple. And do you not know that King David spent the rest of his life preparing, getting all the supplies and storing them up so that when the time came for Solomon, his son, to succeed him on the throne, he had everything he needed in order to fulfill the vision that God had given his father. My God, you've got to know the power and the blessing of being prepared. God is saying that the vision that he has given some of you is so large that you're not going to be able to just show up all willy-nilly and, and expect it to turn out right. God gives the best, and that means we've got to give the best in return. And so what can you do to prepare yourself? Maybe some of you are saying, well, I feel like God is calling me to the field of evangelism and I'm going to be traveling all over the world preaching the gospel. That's great. That is fine. But have you studied the word of God lately? Have you made that a part of your daily practice to get into the word of God and study his truths and prepare sermons and get yourself ready? You know, what has God told you is your big picture? What is the purpose that God has sanctioned on your life? You need to find out what it is, what it is, because it is the will of God for you to know. You know, people quote that verse and I've, I've done it myself and I've shouted over it and rejoiced over it. And there's this, this verse that the apostle Paul quotes from the old Testament that says, I have not seen ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And you know, that is a great, that is a great verse. You know, I love it because you know, that means God is about to blow my mind. 
but it says that God has prepared for them that love him and that it hasn't even entered into your heart yet. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. But Paul went on in the next verse and said, but it is revealed unto us by his spirit. In other words, it is time now for you to know what the will of God is for your life and govern yourselves accordingly. You've got to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to prepare yourself for what God is about to do. I get so excited because I know, I know, I know the vision that God has given me for my life. And I'm just waiting. I'm just biding my time. I'm just preparing for the coming of the Lord, you might as well say. I'm preparing for that vision to come to pass. And I keep working and I keep doing and I keep learning because I need to be prepared for what's next. God needs us to be prepared. It is so important. Let me give you some scripture that is, that's just going to blow your mind today. Do you not know that in the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 54, God actually tells uh, the people about their future, about Jerusalem's future. He starts out Isaiah 54 and verse 1, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, that thou didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. My God, that, that verse alone gets me excited because see, I don't have any children. And God is saying right here that I'm, I'll am i have more children than I could ever birth in my lifetime. God is going to cause me to reproduce, hallelujah, in other ways than just having natural babies. God is going to cause me to to be productive. Hallelujah. And so he goes on to say in the next verse, and, and, and this is the verse where I'm just woo, so super excited. I'm getting tongue tied. So the next verse, let me tell you what it doesn't say. The next verse doesn't say, now that I promised you this, go on somewhere and sit down and, and just wait for it. Don't do anything. Just wait for it. Be happy and wait for it. That is not what the next verse says. The next verse says, enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. My God, can I just be real today and be upfront with you? Verse two is so exciting, but in essence, God is saying, get to work. You've got some work to do. Enlarge the place of thy tent. You've got to get up off the couch and prepare. You've got to get ready. You've got to stop thinking so small. You've got to prepare yourself. You've got to have a change of mindset that God is actually going to do what he said he's going to do in your life. You've got to stop thinking that because you've never seen it, because you've never done it, because you've never experienced it, and nobody that you know has either. You've got to get all of that out of your mind because God, what God has promised shall come to pass. And God can't lie. He can't change and he won't take it back. Hallelujah. And so he said, enlarge the place of your tent. You know, Bishop T.D. Jakes would say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You've got to enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine inhabitations. Where you are is too small. Where your thinking is too small. What you're doing is too small. In fact, he said, you're going to have to lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. You've got to strengthen those stakes so that the blessing of the Lord, oh, glory to God, won't just wipe you out because God is trying to get you to that next level. But he's saying what's prolonging it from coming to pass is that you ain't ready. Okay, I know God probably didn't say ain't, but I'm just being me today. You're not ready for what's next, but I'm here to tell you what to do to get ready according to the word of God, because God has promised you're going to break forth on the right hand and on the left hand. It's going to be like 
uh, of breaking out like a flooding. Like, you know how in Louisiana uh, years ago when uh, the levees broke, Lord help them, the levees broke and there was such a massive flooding. Well, God is saying the blessings of the Lord are going to be like that. They're going to break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make desolate cities to be inhabited. He said, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Oh, glory to God. I needed to hear this today because sometimes the reason why you, you feel so intimidated is because you feel like the vision that you have, that God has given your life is so big that nobody will believe that you can do it. Well, it's not their vision and they didn't give it to you. And so God is saying, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded or confused, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. I want you to know and be encouraged today that if you want the vision of God to come to pass in your life, you've got to prepare. Get ready because he's coming. The Bible says, hallelujah, that the vision is for an appointed tarry, excuse me, is for an appointed time, though it tarry, wait for it. And in the end, it shall speak and not lie because he that shall come will come and will not tarry. God wants you to wait, but in that waiting, there is a preparation process. You've got to be prepared for what God has next. I've got to stop now because I am so excited and I think I've given you enough to ignite the vision that you are allowing to lie dormant in your life and you think it's just going to happen because you're you. God is saying, prepare yourself. It's coming. Prepare yourself. It's on the way. Prepare yourself. The promise that he promised you, whether it was last month, last year, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it is coming to pass. Prepare yourself. Get your mind right. Get your body right. Get your spirit right. Get your finances right because it's coming to pass in the name of Jesus. I encourage you, be blessed. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong, be blessed, be empowered in the name of Jesus. And I'll see you on the next edition of Empowered Heart to Heart. May the Lord bless you.